working on several things out here in the boat yard today. We've got crack gel coat. We've got criminal neglect. Now, if you'll notice, this gel coat, the oxidation, you can see the different levels back to the here. That's because I've already been working at the front, working in progression, coming toward the back. Let me show you what we got here. This has already been pressure washed, and that's the uh, fade that we're at right now. Our color should be closer to this turquoise here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to work on criminal neglect. <laughs> yeah, the baby was left alone to mature. So this 1969, I believe, Lightning, has a lot of oxidation. It also has one of the hardest color match colors known to man, turquoise. So hopefully there are no areas that are worn, completely oxidized, 100% through the gel coat. And I thought this would be a good one to show you guys that if you're working on something, especially if you're working on a Lightning, these are one of the best sailboats, bar none, that you will be able to get into and enjoy. They're a balsa core, very light. They move really easy. They're along the line of the Flying Scott, with the exception of they have this sharp bow, which makes it a little easier to cut through the water. Now, if you're used to a big fixed kill vessel or even a swing kill, this has the rudder board that you raise and lower the same way you do in the Flying Scots. We have little balers here that you can pop open and it'll clear itself out. But if you don't clear it out, the water will stand and it will rot out your stringer ribs. And that's what was wrong here with this. Also, it has a lot of sun damage to the gel coat. I had been working last season on trying to duplicate this and the owner and I have spoken. And even though I was able to duplicate this texture, transferring it is going to take two long so we're just going to put a cover patch on it to repair the gel coat as good as possible the main thing is getting this to stop oxidizing and to gel coat the bottom so that it does not look like old dry cracked clay so i've got my work cut out for me this is not an overnight job for any of you wanting to take on a task like this. You are going to have hundreds of hours invested in this to start out. And you're going to have about $4,500 worth of material invested in this once you go through abrasives and uh, compounds and fiberglass and resin and so if you find one for free, go ahead and know you're going to have about five to eight thousand dollars invested in wood finish, fiberglass, resin, hardeners, gel coat. So stay tuned. I'm going to get to her.
Now, due to the age of the gel coat and the vessel itself, you're going to see the balsa core joints through the gel coat surface. This may shine out, but you will not be able to sand it out, trying to sand it out. You will actually pass through the gel coat surface itself. And this gel coat is already so thin that you run a risk, because it's all oxidized away, you run a risk of sanding through it as it is. And then you're going to have a real expensive repair going back and trying to fill in the gel coat on this vessel. So <clears throat> just to do this repair for the member at the sailing club I was looking at the receipts I think I'm just a little over $4,800 into this vessel right now and that's my expense so basically <laughs> I'm going to wind up doing this vessel I'll have about 5000 tied up in it of my own money. So if this is something you want to do, keep that in mind. If you uh, if you go out and you buy a vessel and you want to fix it up and sell it, and you know do a flip on it, you figure your time and your labor and what you actually think you're worth, and then uh, triple that because you underestimated and then double that because you still didn't estimate enough and then you're about where you need to be so uh, I'm going to 
get a little buffing compound on this and uh, see if this is going to be what I want it to be and it's going to be what it is uh, there's no going further than this okay now I've got my buffing compound I don't have to splatter any into my eyes. Don't need to buff those. Okay. Get the drill out of the way so I don't cover it in buffing compound. Setting up filming is going to make it take longer. For those of you that do not know what I just did, I just cleaned the buffing pad. You do not want any debris in that buffing pad. Because your grit or trash or anything that's in your buffing pad will leave swirls in the gel coat and they'll really show up now I'm only doing a small section at a time and I'm going to keep a lid on my buffing compound I don't want to leave it open to get trash and debris in it and just as I said that a little bug tried to get in there This stuff is not cheap. Now you start out at a low speed and you work your way up. And you do not want to stop at any time. You want to keep the buffer moving because if you stop, this gel coat will burn. You will cook it off the boat. You will ruin the thing. So I'm just going to start out smearing it around. And I'm not going to work a large area. I'm only going to work what I can get with a comfortable side to side and up and down motion. And what I like about this buffing machine if you can hear me is that I can increase the power right here at my thumb or decrease it to get the smear that I want and work it up to speed got that sweet spot I'm trying to hit and I'm going just a little too far that's why I came off I think it's gonna be about four and a quarter on this one yep, a little less than that As you're 
compound wears down, this compound that I'm using, it starts out at one grit, and as you use it, it breaks down to finer and finer grit. And you'll notice that you have to keep turning your machine down because the friction is going to become less and less uh, each pass. And then you're going to want to do a cleaning again and get the gum out and continue buffing. Then I'm going to come back with another light coat in some of the spots I see that I want to address. And I'm going to start all over again. Now you'll notice I went a little further past this way than where I had actually put the compound. And what that is is so that I blend in and I keep moving in sections that are my shoulder width apart because that gives me a comfortable, I can just rock this on my leg. I use my leg to hold this up and I just slowly run back and forth until I get everything buffed out. Now this is gonna be a, about as good as this will get. This isn't gonna get any better. You can see a reflection in it, but you can also see that the gel coat is very thin. We're probably gonna get about another 20 years of life out of this right now. And then if anybody wants to continue with it, they'll have to either do the sin of putting top paint on it or they'll have to read your code. I recommend in the money and gel paint.
This will continue sanding in the five to six stages of abrasive all the way down the port side of the vessel. Then the buffing will go down the port side of the vessel. Then it will be time to wax it. Do not wax it in sunlight. Now I pulled it out of the shop uh, today to do this little portion here, this quarter of the front. And the reason I did that is so that I would have room to set the camera up. And I'm actually prepping this up. I'm going to be teaching someone today how to do this when they get here at around 3.30. And they will be inside out of the direct sunlight. This is going to give them an opportunity to earn a better income than if they were to go into the food industry because that's not somewhere during COVID I want my son working. So he wants to learn how to do this. And I figure might as well teach him on a few of these really bad vessels. And then I'm going to set him up in a business to where he can go around and he can take the detail equipment with him and he can go from place to place in his pickup truck and he can service people's vessels and keep their gel coat from ever becoming this oxidized faded and worn because with oxidation what is happening is your gel coat is actually rotting away it is just like metal rusting away so it is oxidation. It is wearing thinner and thinner as time goes by. And I am pretty happy with the appearance of what I just achieved in this short two hours we've been at it this morning. So if you can see this, I don't know if you can or not, going back on the vessel and you can see where we stop buffing and you can see where we stop sanding so we're back into something that looks like baby powder then we're sanded down to 1000 grit and then we're buffed the next step will be to wax that so it took me two hours to go from the bow to that point in sanding so I still need to polish back to this point and that is about one sixteenth of the vessel so there's what you're going to have if you can move along as well as I am hopefully you can hope you've enjoyed the video like subscribe and follow Thank mm -hmm. you.